On today's Join Us in France, a tiny bit of history on the Cannes Film Festival taking place right now, mid-May 2016 in France. France episode 110. Hello, I'm Annie, and Join Us in France is a show about all things French. I love France. I was born and raised in France. I live in France, but I've also lived in the UK and the US for a couple of decades. So I do have a unique perspective on my own country, and I want to help you understand France better, at least the way I see France. Thank you so much for all the people that have reached out to me to offer to do trip reports. I love those. There will be many more coming and I'll be recording more uh, shortly. This episode is of interest to you. Remember to go on the website, joinusinfrance.com and search for the word like keywords like Provence or Cannes or uh, keywords like that. And the search bar is your friend. You will find a ton of things that are not right on the front page. For show notes and photos on this episode, go to joinusinfrance.com forward slash and the number 110. The 69th International Film Festival in Cannes opened in Cannes on Wednesday, May 5th, 2016. And so today I want to give you a quick little bit of historical perspective on this great event. Now, if you have been listening to the show for a while, you know that I'm not much of a socialite. I don't work in the film industry, but Cannes is a huge event and its history is actually very interesting. But you may think that, yeah, yeah, Cannes is big, but America has the Oscars, and that's what counts. And yes, the Oscars are huge, but they are an awards ceremony, not a film festival. There's a difference. Cannes is a film festival, the biggest film festival in the world at this time. The biggest film festival in America is the Sundance Film Festival that Robert Redford started at his uh, home resort of Sundance in Utah. I love Sundance. I've been there many times. It's amazing. But it's a much younger film festival that doesn't have all the historical background and all that. There are many other film festivals around the world, but for some reason, Cannes and Sundance are the ones I always hear about. So... How did the, the Cannes Film Festival start? Who started it? Why do French people still care about this? Why do people in general care about this? There are two people credited with starting the film festival, the Cannes fin Film Festival. The first is Jean Zé, who is credited for a lot of things. And as a matter of fact, he was, his ashes were just put in the you know, Pantheon recently, last year. And I talked about it on one of the episodes. The other person is Philippe Erlanger. He is not near as well known, especially outside of France. Um, but let me tell you a, a little bit about his story. On, on September 3rd, 1938, so this is, takes us back a while, this young man, Philippe Erlanger, he is a trained historian and he works as a public servant. He was invited to represent the French government at the Mostra Film Festival in Venice. At the time, Italy is under the rule of Mussolini, even though this happens before the war. And as a matter of fact, the name of the award was the Coppa Mussolini. That was the name of the award they gave. I mean, it was, you know, it was uh, very much a Mussolini thing. This young Philippe Erlanger, he's really happy because a French movie is rumored to be one of the favorites this year. The movie is called Le Quai des Brumes. In English, it's Port's Port of Shadows. And then he hears that the German Minister of Propaganda, who is Joseph Goebbels, He's going to be at the festival in person and that both Hitler and Mussolini want a movie called Olympia to win. This is a German propaganda movie about the 1936 Summer Olympics and an, an abashed love song to the Aryan race. It's kind of sick. 
Okay. The Americans refuse to attend the festival. The English leave the festival. This now I'm talking about the the Venice festival, okay? So the, the English leave the festival and this young Frenchman, he gets back on the night train to Paris and on that train they make a stop in Cannes where he walks off and sees the glorious beach and the palm trees and he thinks, oh, this is a nice place. And then he gets back onto the train and later on he writes a report and goes on to to, to meet with his friend Jean Zé, who is the Minister of Culture at the time. He wasn't called Minister of Culture at the time, but you get the idea. He was a big wig in the government. Now, Erlanger talks with his friend Jean Zé and they they must, they feel like they must react to this provocation by the Germans and the Italians by instituting a film festival for free nations. And then they wonder, where could we host it? So they think, oh, maybe Alger, Algiers, Algiers was French at the time, maybe Vichy, which, you know, it's not yet the capital of French collaboration, maybe Biarritz, Maybe not. Maybe Cannes. Why not? Huh? And th- what they were looking for was a large city where people like to go on vacation. Once the proposal is made, the city of Cannes offered to pay for the whole thing. And that's why the festival was established there. They worked very hard on the project. The first year the Cannes Film Festival takes place is just one year later. The world loves this idea. American stars arrive on hydroplanes that land in the Bay of Cannes. The Duke and the Duchess of Windsor come by train along with a hundred suitcases. The Cannes Casino houses a fantastic dinner. Now, the casino is not there anymore. I'm told it looked like a train station. It was not very interesting. But on the first night of the festival in 1939... Suddenly, the weather turns and some strong winds come in and destroy the decor. Lots of beach chairs fly around, and it's a bad omen. And indeed, indeed, the festival didn't get to continue beyond that first day because the next day, September 1st, 1939, Hitler has decided to invade Poland on September 2nd. England declares war to Germany, and on September 3rd, France declares war against Germany. So the first iteration of the Cannes Film Festival ended very poorly and very quickly. The film festival is on hold during the war, obviously, but it resumes in 1946. You have to imagine, right after the war, France is still recovering from the war. The French are still hungry and broken. It's These are not good times. I mean, people are happy that the war is over, but the country is having a hard time getting back on its feet. And also, the Americans and Russians start jockeying for power. Well, they were in the middle of doing that. Uh, the, the English, it's funny, when the festival takes place, the English come to Cannes with a small aircraft carrier, which they dock in the bay. Uh, the Russians throw a cocktail party with vodka and caviar, and the Americans have all the whiskey and appetizers you can eat. The, the people of Cannes are very happy to get some nice food and drink and welcome them all. They don't care who it is. They just want the party. There were giant picnics, and on the beach at Cannes, regular people could be seen talking to stars. And it was friendly and not at all what it became later with all the security and uh, you know strict separation between the public and the stars and all that. The first bikinis appear in Cannes. Uh, This is another funny story. Uh, Some guy invented the bikini, an engineer, and he was trying to find uh, somebody to, you know, model it. And the fashion models were too modest to be seen in a bikini. But a young lady who, she poses nude for artists and she doesn't care. So she shows up on the beach with the first bikini. And as a result, she gets 5,000 love letters. (laughs) which goes to show you that some men are really shallow, but it's funny anyway. Um, It was always... uh, uh, The Cannes Film Festival was a mixture of low-brow entertainment mixed with some of the most brilliant and creative people in the world. For example, the first person to preside at the Cannes 
Film Festival was Louis Lumière, the man who invented movie technology. And at first, there were no prizes per se. I mean, people came to present their movie, and a lot of people went home with a prize. You know, it was, it became a competition later on. But it was and it is a place where people meet, exchange ideas, start projects, etc. But it's hard to keep it real now. There are so many people that go. I was there one year, maybe eight years ago, something like that. I was there on business for something completely different, but it was so busy. It was just crazy. And it, you know, it's not something that I, that I enjoy that much, that mean that big crowds and stuff, but I'm sure that for people who love the movies and who work in the industry, it must be really exhilarating. So next year, it's going to be the 70th anniversary and it's to be truly crazy, but the Cannes Film Festival has grown in size every year. It's just crazy. Now let's talk about some of the movies that have won at Cannes. Some of the old movies that have won at Cannes. I mean, some people, French people, they always like to say that Cannes Film Festival only gives awards to movies nobody wants to see. I think they probably have a point, but it wasn't always that way. And it doesn't have to keep being that way, okay? Don't do that, people. <laughs> so let me set the stage. It's a beautiful resort with a beach front lined with palm trees, a red carpet, limousines, stars wearing high fashion gowns, film executives, film producers who go from one meeting to the other. There's press from all over the world. It's, you know, if you want to see the latest and best Canon and Nikon and professional photography gear, this is where you go. It's all there. They have all, each one of these guys has, you know, 20,000 dollars worth of camera equipment on them uh you have you have the press from all over the world as i said the the cocktail parties you have overbooked hotels lots and lots and lots of gawkers it goes on for 11 days in may and can is the hot spot for glamour and fame. It used to be that you could walk up to the stars on the croisette. The, the croisette is the name of the can boardwalk, but it rarely happens anymore. I mean, the whole thing is orchestrated. The public is held at bay. They have barricades. You know, it's, you know, I know they have the well-guarded barricades because that's where they park me. You know, <laughs> the, the movies are shown, they are seen, they are critiqued by licensed film critics, you cannot buy a ticket to that movie theater. You have to be invited. You, you have to be a licensed film critic that gets invited. And it used to be that the film festival was in the fall, was in September or October sometimes, but now it's always in May. And then they say that the weather is better in May, I'm not sure that's true these days, but anyway, that's, that's why they do it in May now. Now, October 5th, 1946, so the first year, the actual, you know, I mean, there was one in, in 39, but it didn't end well. So October 5th, 1946, this is the, the second uh, film festival. At the end of the festival, they shoot some fireworks. They had cocktail parties. But the, but this first festival in Cannes was a messy affair. They had a lot of breakdowns. The films broke. The power stopped working a few times. Like I said, France was still recovering from the war. They lost film. They mixed up film reels. It was a mess. The American and Russian delegations accused one another of sabotage. And of course, it was nothing of the sort. It was just poor organization. You know, uh, that year, Hitchcock was presenting his movie Notorious. Well, it was interrupted a few times because of technical issues. Can you imagine? Um, at the time, the jury was made up of 17 men. Yes, only men. Uh, from the countries where the movies were from. So it was truly an international festival. They invited people from all over the world. There were 45 movies and 68 shorts presented that year, 1946, uh, at the festival. And, uh, and the festival was housed in the casino in Cannes. <laughs> that year they delivered 11 prizes. You know, everybody wins kind of thing. Um, 
But the highest honor went to Roberto Rossellini, Roma Citi Aperta. It's a movie about a young engineer in Rome who tries to escape the Nazis. The, the movie was made in 1946. They were already making uh, Nazi movies in 1946. Didn't take long, did it? And this movie was a blockbuster. Three years later, September 1949, the, fest the festival is three years old, and it has already moved to a bigger and better place, the Palais des Festivals et des Congrès. It's a gorgeous convention center right on the water. I can, I'll show you a photo of what it looks like now on joinusinfrance.com forward slash 110. So that year, 1949, another Nazi story gets the prize. It's The Third Man by Carol Reed. I bet if you don't remember the movie, you'll remember this tune by Anton Karras. filmed in the ruins of the city of Vienna, such as it was left at the end of World War II. Orson Welles is in this movie, and it's about an American who goes to Vienna to find a friend of his and finds out that his friend is at the center of an illicit drug trade. It was penicillin, not the kind of drug trade that we think of today. And this movie is probably the first movie to win the Film Cannes Festival to, ge to go on to become a movie standard that lots of people have seen and love. In April 1953, the Cannes Film Festival is now held in the spring, and the Grand Prix is awarded by f author and filmmaker Jean Cocteau to an other mythical movie, The Wages of Fear, by French-Italian fi filmmaker Henri-Georges Clouseau and starring Yves Montand. 1956, the ninth annual Cannes Festival. By now, this festival is a big deal. Picasso and Brigitte Bardot are in attendance for the first time. And for the first time, a documentary gets awarded the Grand Prix, a documentary that has inspired a lot of love for the oceans in a lot of people, including myself, the Silent World by Jacques-Yves Cousteau. I loved that movie and watched it on TV whenever it came on. Years later, I wasn't even born in 1956. But I also read the book and pretty much memorized the coffee table book that, ins that was inspired by this movie that someone gave me as a kid. I just loved the whole thing. And this is the movie that made Cousteau famous worldwide. In 1963, a movie called Le... Gepard, The Leopard Wins. It's a movie by uh, Visconti, starring Burt Lancaster, Alain Delon, and Claudia Cardinale, who even posed on the beach at Cannes with a real leopard, which drew a lot of attention. It's a historical saga about Garibaldi and the unification of Italy. This was one of the first high-budget movies, and it's a really long movie, three hours and 50 minutes. Oh, my goodness. I thought I was going to try and watch it, but... Three hours and 50 minutes? No, thank you. Uh, but it was a very popular movie. 1964, uh, Catherine Deneuve appears on the scene for the first time. She's only 20, and the movie is Les Parapluies de Cherbourg. In English, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg. And this is a bit of a strange movie because it's a singing movie. And it's, much, it's done much like an opera. The Even regular dialogue is sung. And the music was by the wonderful Michel Legrand. I'm sure you've heard some of it. Let me play just a little bit. It's
It's a love story, of course. It's about a young couple who has to face many obstacles, including the war in Algeria, where the, the young man has just been called to serve. And again, there was some nice attention getting going on. The, when people showed up for the movie, they were all given an umbrella as a gift. And as, the, as they exited the theater, firemen sprayed water on them, so they had to open the umbrellas. And of course, click, click, click photos, you know. The movie was an enormous success in France. 1970, this is the middle of the Vietnam War. The anti-war movie by Robert Altman, MASH, wins the Grand Prix. This movie is not appreciated by everybody. Kurt Douglas, who was on the, on the panel, said he hated it and he just left the de deliberations and the vote. He was just really mad about this. And as much as I loved MASH, the TV series, I must admit, the movie didn't do very much for me either. But you know, whatever, I'm, you know. 1976, now the winner is a movie by a young Martin Scorsese, a uh, taxi driver, and Robert De Niro is the driver, Jody, Jody Foster is only 13 and she appears in this movie, and the, spectator, the spectators, we were really shocked by the violent ending of the movie, um, and the person who is delivering the Grand Prix is Tennessee Williams. So that's all the movies I have time to tell you about today. But if you love the movies, if you enjoy that medium, and if you want to come to Cannes next year for the 70th anniversary of the Cannes Film Festival, make your reservations right away because it really gets crowded. I have no idea who's going to win this year. It's probably a movie I've never seen and will never see, but I don't see that many movies. Elise sees many more movies, and unfortunately, she couldn't be with me tonight, but you know what? If you love it, make a reservation now. It's worth going once in your lifetime, if that's the kind of thing you enjoy. Many thanks to listeners who donate to the show or use our Amazon or hotel booking links on joinusinfrance.com or on the show notes that appear on the podcasting app on your phone. Most new listeners find the show through a recommendation from a friend. If you're the kind of fan who drops our name here and there, bless you and thank you for your help. I hope you have a great time in France. And when you come back, consider sharing your experience and thoughts with other listeners. Drop me a line, Annie at joinusinfrance.com, if you'd like to do a trip report with me. Thank you. Au revoir. This episode is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Non-Derivatives International License.